episode number 98 of the Total Indian Football Show with me, your host Siju. And what a way to start the new year! I have a very lovely. It just feels it gives me a pleasure, you know, at times, and it's such an overjoy for me because uh, when I can call a former player, uh, a friend, and somebody who I can call, and you know, you know, just like you know, just chat, chat, chat here and there about football, about things. Otherwise, uh, and then finally get them on the show and talk. It's 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 an amazing feeling because somewhere there, the fan in me is still there. So uh, that's how it is going to be on this episode. Uh, we have two gentlemen joining us. Uh, one of them you will see uh, for sure. He will join us a little late. Uh, but uh, Big E Eric Parthalu is here in the house, guys, and he's making his debut on this very special podcast. Uh, thank you so much, Eric Parthalu. We all know him. He is. I don't need to introduce him, but just for formality's sake, a former player. Uh, he's played for the Australian team. He's played for the age categories for the national team as well. And of course, uh, Bengaluru FC in the Indian Super League. He's also now the football pundit. And uh, of course, I got to grace uh, alongside him. On the on the show as well uh, this time around. So Eric, thank you so much for taking time. And uh, I know different time zones, but you still made it happen. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. Thanks for having us. It's going to be fun. We've got a big week ahead of us leading up to the Asian Cup. And um, yeah, who would have thought Australia versus India in the same the same group? So it's uh, it's a busy week for for us all. And um, yeah, there's high hopes, isn't there, for India? Even though you know, the coach is trying to play it down a little bit. Um, I think the Australian team, the Socceroos, have to be a little bit wary of India. They're keeping everything close to their chests and um, I'm excited to see what they produce in their first game because it looks like it's a little bit of an unknown. A few big injuries that have had to make, you know, Igor's too much reshuffle the deck, so to speak. Um, and as tournament football, they should be raring to go having one two tournaments uh, in the middle of last year. So it's going to be a big game on Saturday night. Yeah, the other gentleman joining us is Siddhan Tane and again, a familiar face. He's been with us on the show as well and you know him for 420 grams. Uh, I must also say the day we're recording, this is a Monday, but you're listening to this on a Wednesday and you must yeah. have uh, heard Eric on the 420 grams as well alongside Arjun Pandit. So I'll try my best to keep the questions fresh, but we may repeat things. And here we have Mr. Siddhan Tane joining us. Welcome to the show, Siddhan, once again. Good to see you guys. Thanks for having me here. Eh? So you you haven't missed anything. So let's get to it. Uh, you know, while I was doing a bit of my homework, and I found a very interesting quote by the interesting man, and the most interesting man in football these days is the coach uh, Stimach. And uh, the line I want to start off things with, but I just got too excited and carried away was, "A giant is definitely out of its slumber now." So let's let's start with that. Uh, but he also goes on to say something else. Uh, after that, he's like, "But I reckon it will take us another four years to enter the top ten in Asia." But hey, let's get back to the Asian Cup. We want to see the national team play. It's our World Cup, right? Uh, and that's how big this competition is. But uh, Stimach says that he's, I don't know, like you've, you've heard all of us speak in different platforms uh, saying that the focus is on, suddenly the focus is again is gone back on the World Cup and not on the Asian Cup. Now, Sudan, I'll start with you. Um, you've spoken to him. Uh, on a regular basis and uh, chatting with him, probably understand him a little bit more than we do. Uh, so, is that his mind game or is that actually what his focus is on? But because before a big tournament like the Asian Cup that we all know and we look forward to, especially for the Indian team, uh, having saying that, you know, okay, we can't do much over here. Yes, injuries are there and stuff like that. Uh, but at the same time, to coming on just before a tournament to say that, you know, we are looking at World Cup, we may or may not do well uh, in the Asian Cup. How do you see that from the Indian team coach? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a mixed bag, uh, Shiju. Uh, I, and I think uh, Eric's also given his take on it. Uh, and, and we had a chat on it just after that first press conference uh, that, that he held in Qatar where some of these things were outlined. Uh, it's not a new idea as far as I think Steve Match is concerned. He's been saying this uh, for some time. I think maybe what my understanding uh, of it is like at a personal level, he seems to be quite engaged with the project that he's been given in India and with the extension and all of that. Uh, I think it's a job that that has its challenges and, and yet uh, it also has a lot of... Uh, 
interesting opportunities from a coaching perspective as I, i'm sure eric would uh, 100% agree um so 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 just in that context i think he's building up to be around hopefully for a longer time the, that that is probably uh, the outlook or the perspective from which uh, from which he's coming he's also being realistic in terms of keeping in check the expectations that various people might have uh that said uh, i was listening to uh, eric talking to uh, pandit on on our uh, on 420 uh, j- just a little while ago and and uh, it's absolutely 100% true that that qualifying for the world cup or a bigger competition than this uh, is not in the near future for the indian men's team uh, for sure and so so this is a, a, for sh- for sure the biggest competition that we'll play like you're saying this is our uh, this is our world cup um and uh, for that to be anything less than 100% focus is a, is a bit disconcerting i think maybe the attempt in, of saying some of that was to take some of the pressure off uh, the boys who will be facing these big teams australia uzbekistan in particular uh, and to give them the confidence to go out there and and do a bit of uh, the stuff they've been training at to show how they've improved physically and 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 how uh the time that this team now the, the core of this team has spent together how the tactical work also that they've done uh how they're able to put it into a competition format to have a game plan and to at least uh, do 100% to try and execute that game plan and then be a little bit detached from the outcome i think that's that's my take on where the coach is at the moment Right. Eric, I think you've spoken enough about this. So I wouldn't ask you the same things again. But now shifting the focus on the Australian side, right? Uh, it's a big game and some of the players in the squad have played the World Cup, even the ones recently. Uh, the last one that happened in Qatar as well. Uh, you know, going out against Argentina, the key player is the goalkeeper. If I'm not wrong, uh, Matthew Ryan, one of the senior players. There's also news apparently that he's, he's there in training, but he missed out on the friendly game. uh sustaining an injury from his club uh football so is there a, a confirmation on that that will he actually play in the first game or what is that how does that look like yeah look it's uh i think that the mail is that matty ryan will not play the first game which is well it's it's good news for for india because he's the guy with the highest number of caps in the team is 86 now um we actually got our cap our first cap at the same time and um yeah he's gone on from strength to strength playing across Europe and um is really firmly the number one goalkeeper the good thing for australia is that that's probably our best position in terms of our production line what's our best position to get players overseas and it's in the goalkeeping position and um joe gauchi played the other night and he's playing regularly in in the a league for adelaide united um and did very well against bahrain the other night could have made a couple of errors but he actually cleaned himself up um with a couple of things he almost got wrong so he looks as though he'll step in and play as the number 1 um yeah matty ryan had uh, a fractured cheekbone 3 weeks ago he had surgery um uh, and the mail is he won't be risked for that first game um but yeah looking at that lineup there's there's still a couple of players that were in the world cup you know 12 months ago and it was very happy hunting ground for us uh, craig goodwin scored that first goal against france Uh, in the first couple of minutes and we all got excited and you know, we lost to France in the end um and then we went and got two two more wins in that group and got us to the the round of 16 and we met Argentina and after that it was uh it was curtains but i think australia they 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 feel confident knowing that they're back in Qatar familiar surroundings um they weren't hugely convincing the other night against Bahrain but i think um they have enough quality to get the job done in those key moments there are only a couple of of chances really and we buried them so that's international football something that india need to get right if they're going to get anything from their group so then coming to you now we saw the game against qatar right we we went to kuwait beat them had a great team a good football uh, everyone's impressed by the performance and then we had a lot of expectations uh, against qatar as well having played at home uh, and then you see a sudden for a man who said i mean i don't want to completely be negative about this but someone who said okay world cup qualification is also on the cards uh to, and then having a home advantage or whatever advantage that is uh because bhubneshwar was full and we were all looking forward to at least maybe yes it's a tough game but having seen the changes that he then brought in uh 
starting from the keeper and everything that went about in that game. How do you now assess that, you know, going to this big one against Australia? Because uh, let's not underplay it. It is a big one. And uh, like Eric mentioned, we still have players, uh, though Matt Ryan may be missing, there are still some players who've played the World Cup experience. That's a different ball game altogether. How do you see him, uh, Stimash, now coming up with his 11? Or do you see some more of, you know, his tactics that he's going to play? I will we'll start from uh, maybe the, the last bit, which is the 11. I think uh, most of us will agree on... Uh, the 11 who we would want to start at least the first game. Uh, maybe we'll have a bit of back and forth on whether uh, it should be Sunil leading the line uh, in front um, and maybe one or two, like based on, I suppose, subjective uh, reading of the game, uh, whether Rahul Bheke plays or uh, maybe they try to mix it up a little bit if they play, play Akash uh, on, on the left and maybe use Subhashish uh, in the middle uh, a little more. I don't know. Uh, but more or less, I think we'll. Uh, I think th- we we can be fairly confident of the team that that will come out and, and the the shape uh, with which th- they will at least face when they don't have the ball. Um, as far as the World Cup qualification bit is concerned, Chiju, I think it has to be looked at in context. I think the idea is not that we will qualify for the World Cup, but that we need to make it through to the next round of the qualification process, which will then allow us or uh, competitive fixtures against teams that are in that top tier in Asia. And that that is vitally important uh, for the, you know, more medium-term growth of, of the national team. And I think uh, that has to be kept in uh, sort of in focus. It's not that we're going to go all the way and qualify. That, that's uh, pretty much, uh, I suppose, many of us will also be okay to write it down and say as of now that we're not going to the next World Cup. Uh, but but the next round of matches definitely gives you uh, competitive fixtures against um, a, a higher tier, which is, which is something that that we need on a regular basis uh, for this team to you know grow grow in any way. So and also then to consistently be reaching that stage, to consistently be qualifying for the Asian Cup, all these things should start to become givens as far as Indian football is concerned. And only then, once once that happens, I think for a couple of cycles. Uh, then we can push on to uh, even dreaming of um, ma- making some kind of an impact or w- once, uh, you know, the, the the slots at the World Cup after uh, the next one, uh, when they're expanded, uh, eight and a half teams maybe aim for a playoff slot somewhere uh, in the in the future, maybe 20 years from now or, or, or however long it might take. Uh, but, but before that, the goals are set out. And if we want to be in the top 10 or top 12 even in Asia, where when we go to the Asian Cup, then we get a better draw in the group stage. Uh, we get a chance to maybe win a couple of games in the group stage uh, and start qualifying for the first knockout round in that competition on a regular basis. These, these have to be the the sort of uh, milestones on on this on this uh, growth process. Um, I, I I mean many coaches have come and and said that you know this is a sleeping giant and the sleeping giant is woken up and all of that. We have a tendency in India these days uh, across the board to look at uh, history from when we come in and start to do things, right? And and kind of ignore what's been happening in the past. Uh, as someone who's been involved in Indian football for many years, I think uh, people like Eric might take a bit of offense to say that we've been sleeping all this while. Uh, it's not that efforts have been made and, and, we, and where we are today is also a result of of those processes uh, good bad we can evaluate of course all the time and as as we do uh, and hopefully some of the better practices that we're seeing around asia around the world start seeping into the system and and they then become the foundation of of where we go from here so 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 world cup qualification with the caveat that the the aim is to get to the next round uh, not to qualify for the world cup uh, but not taking any focus away from, I think, I think this this is going to be a great opportunity for uh, a lot of the guys in this team to play against uh, serious, serious opposition guys who, uh, you know, play in some of the top leagues in the world. And I was lucky to watch a couple of Australia games at the stadiums in Qatar in 2022. 20, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, we were also, as, as Asian journalists, excited when that first goal went in. Of course, you still had an idea of what might happen in the next uh, 80, 90 minutes. Uh, but, but still, you know, he got the stadium on their feet. And, and it's those kind of 
uh, small moments that will be our biggest takeaway, I think, from this tournament as well. Eric, coming to you now, we also have the other two teams, right? It is uh, also the Group B is known as one of the tough groups and Australia, Uzbekistan, Syria and India. Now, we can always say that, you know, when, in a larger conversation among the Indian football fans, they're like, okay, chalo, Syria ke saath, you know, against Syria, we probably might just sneak in a point if we have some chance. But uh, having that mentality, I don't think the players who are going to step into that, you know, playing field will have any kind of, any sort of those thoughts going on into their minds because both the countries, in fact, all three countries are doing really well in, in their own way. So, what do you think, as somebody who knows Australia and somebody who also knows the other countries and having played in India, knowing the players so very well and the system, understanding the system so well, uh, how do you think the Indian team should approach this and what are you, what are you expecting from the Indian team? Well, yeah, big question. I think, um, yeah, you look at the rankings, uh, Uzbekistan are 68th in the world and I think uh, Syria 91st. You can't let the rankings, you know, make you feel intimidated uh even the fact that australia is is 25th um three bad games and you're, and you're back in the 60s or the 50s so um when, when constantine was a coach it was great because they got the, the lowest ranking and then they, they they've ho- hovered about that mark for so long in the low hundreds and early 90s and um and that's what you want to see you want to see growth and 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 possibly playing in that next round of the the FIFA World Cup qualifiers is where the, the the team needs to go to get those rankings. Um, now, Uzbekistan, the biggest thing is that their their star player Shomorodov won't play. He's uh, the captain and goal scorer, and he's been outstanding for them for a long time. So that's a big loss for them. Um, you know, they, it's their third appearance at the Asian Cup. They just had a friendly today against Palestine, so they're going about things in a way that most teams are by playing friendlies and getting across there and getting a feel for it. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel with Uzbekistan, they're, they're a huge powerhouse that, are, uh, you know, everyone's expecting maybe Australia to top the group. I think Uzbekistan could be the team that tops the group. Uh, at club level, you remember Mohan Bagan playing there, getting getting pumped. Um, you know, there, there's this, there's so much to like about that region. Um, with Syria, there's they're just so inconsistent. There's a lot of good footballers coming out of Syria at the moment. Um, they've just um, brought a guy in from camp who's got Colombian roots. That's you know been playing across in South America and Estudiantes and um, new as old boys as well. So they're bringing it. It's another conversation about OCI and getting the passports, you know, changed or whatever. But I, I seriously hope that that's going to be the difference for India in the future. Um, not saying you go and change the whole team and get you know guys who are naturalized, but you look at Australia's squad. Seven seven players out of twenty six yeah. are, are born outside of Australia. I'm saying so. Um, you're not you're not you're not making up the whole team that's from other regions, but it's one of those where everyone else is doing it, and you're going to get left behind. So I know that they're trying to work with FIFA, the AIFF. Um, so to answer your question, Sidhu, in terms of the group, you're looking at it and going, can we drag ourselves through the first two and get a win against Syria? We know that four of the best third-place teams qualify as well, and that's got to be the, the, the marker for India. They've got to go into Australia and, in, uh, and Uzbekistan and try and get some sort of result out of one of them or both and mm. I, I think against Syria, there's a chance, and everyone's got to believe the last game, maybe even Syria, if they're sitting on zero points and India's on one, there's a great chance to go and get something. So um, it's exciting, but I wouldn't be getting disheartened if, if they lose the first one or even the second one. There's still a chance for that last game. Yeah, it's sort of like our, our World Cup final in a way. And, <laughs> and, 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 and in that sense, the, the big positive is that in many ways, we're like the, the best supported, worst football team in the world. Uh, so, so, you know, like uh, uh, in, I hope the players are looking at it from that perspective and, and understand that like uh, there really is no pressure at this stage, nothing to lose and just, just, just focusing on sticking to that 
uh, game plan and hopefully the game plan is a good one and 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 uh, like eric is saying if we can get something out of the first two games then uh, everything to play for against the Syrians. They, they've they've done it before they had that nil all against qatar yeah. when you know gooper had an amazing game 20 odd saves but it's in the in those games where you've got to take heart in the small victories getting to half time nil nil you know, getting the ball in the other end of the pitch and keeping possession, mm. closing a team out. Australia's not the team of old. They're not, you know, that threatening when you watch them play, particularly if you do your homework and you sit in there. I don't want to play for a draw, but if India's serious about progressing, and that's the game plan, two draws and a win, mm. or three three draws could almost get you through. So that was my, my question, Mark, CJ, before I get to you. It's just kind of... Um, about the fixtures that they chose in 2023. And there was no one that was above India in the world ranking that they chose to play against, apart from Qatar. The games against Iraq, I don't think, really count. Um, but the Qatar game was a World Cup qualifier. I would have loved to have seen too much gone. And this week, let's play two games mm. against other opposition. It doesn't mean anything towards my managerial record. We'll play it behind closed doors, whatever it is try and get them and test them against really good opponents. Because don't forget, all these boys play in the ISL. So where's the exposure test. outside? Yeah. Yeah. So then you want to take that bit. What, how do you see that? Because there are other teams, like even we're talking about Australia, who's played uh, played a friendly and even other teams in our group. Uh, he coach talking about not having enough time and all of those things. But uh, do you... Did you do you think there could have still been a time probably or by the time this episode comes out, do you still see a friendly game? I don't think so because uh, we're just a few days away from the kickoff. But uh, how do you assess that aspect? You know, where Eric yeah. mentioned, I think he mentioned on the 420 grams as well. I think, uh, I don't think they're even trying to line up a friendly. What what the coach told us the uh, when we spoke uh, was that uh, they will probably play just within the squad. Uh, they that will be the extent of of the uh, you know just maybe to to uh, work some things out and see who's fitting better into the system and who's feeling uh, the best in the last few days but um, the challenges i guess that a team like australia and others have is uh, like like eric has been pointing out it's not that this team hasn't spent time together they've spent quite a bit of time together so 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 the other teams need to play games to get their cohesion and, and their movement and, and their communication uh, sort of a little bit uh, sorted out uh, before a big competition like this. Uh, I think for India, maybe the work is a little more at a basic level. You have to make sure that everyone, when they get back, are are at speed, uh, that your, mm. your physical aspects are all taken care of and sorted because that's mm. the foundation of whatever you're going to try and do, uh, particularly yeah. if you're going to be defending for 180 minutes, uh, like, switched on. Uh, so so the focus is a little bit different and, and there is a bit of fear, I guess, uh, because of injuries that have popped up. Um, and I, I don't know, maybe Eric can, can tell us a bit more about this, about yeah. whether... Uh, that injury aspect and, and and even now there are some gaps in the care that the players are receiving uh, that that yeah. is leading us to because we're playing much lower intensity seasons than most people around the world and yet we are yeah. as you know dogged by uh, the same kind of injuries that everyone else is going through well you look at Anwar Ali and Sahal both involved in AFC cup campaigns playing in Asia um just the, the workload went up a little bit for these guys. And the scheduling, it, it, when you look back on it, you, you, we're probably going to look at it and go, it actually would have been better not to, to break for the, um, mm. the international breaks because there were so many breaks for those teams playing for Mumbai, Odisha, um, and, and Mombagan. Mm -hmm. they, 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 had, they had so many breaks and then all of a sudden so many games. And... Somewhere along the line, that, that, that throws you out of whack when you've been playing as a player in the ISL for many years and you're playing once a week for six months. And in the off-season, if you're a national team player, you go into camp. I know that Anur Ali was a bit of a contact injury, maybe the same with Sahal, with, with the tackle that Jahul put him on. Mm. Um, but I would think that that's why Stimach has not decided to have a, a friendly match because if you lose one more key player... Yeah. Because Jeeks and Anur Ali are massive losses because Absolutely. they're such big presences as well. Um, but 
you know, if you're going to go and train the boys in in um, the Middle East for 12, 13 days before the, the first game, you, you're always at risk. Yeah. So you, you, are you telling me that in the friendly game that uh, Vikram's not going to be going <laughs> to, to try and smash Sunil Chetri to get a place in the team? I would be. So for sure. there, there's always yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what the exact the exact limitations are for Stimach and, and the squad. I agree. You want to get there with with everybody fit and available. Um, but when they get there fit and available, what's you know h- how does that look? Because I'm looking at my team here, and you've got you know the front five or six players that are five foot seven, yeah. and um, love that, love that they're, that those types of players. But in international football, um, you'll you'll see a big difference when it comes to set pieces and where there are other options. To, to get a few more big boys for, for Stimach, but he was not open to looking at anybody else, which I find you know, a little bit staggering. Um, his, his pool of players was a little bit small playing in the ISL. I mean, we talked about Jay Gupta and maybe he played his way out of getting into the side towards the end, but mm. just his physical presence. If, if Sebastius gets injured or Mishra gets injured, just have him in the squad, put him in. Yeah, 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 fair play. And uh, yeah, I mean, even someone like a, I don't know what's happening uh, with with Sana Singh at centre back and 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 a, a couple of these other players, right, who've been there or thereabouts, mm. uh, and bring a little bit of physicality because uh, at the back for sure. I mean, the, some of the Aussies are, are big, big, uh, big lads, and and they will be coming forward for those. Yeah, uh, and and what I'm surprised about, um, sorry to cut you off, no, what no. I'm surprised about too when you when you see What's too much is put out, and this is the, going back to the competitive matches. It's one thing having competitive matches, but it's about what system do you want to use when you're trying to defend for your life. And I, I don't recall a game where he's gone a back five. Mm. You know, back four is the way to go. Mm. Um, but if you're going a back three with a five, you can get more defensive minded players and actually really shut off the sides where the crosses are going to come, come in from. and hurt you. Yeah. So. I'm looking at that lineup going, it'll be a back four 100%, but he never had to play a back five because he was playing against teams that were ranked 120 and 130 and you've got to come out and play and win the SAF Cup and keep your job. Mm. That's where I think he's he's lent towards that for himself, which every coach would. Um, but there should have been some assurances that, hey, let's go and play a friendly against you know, South Korea or, yeah. I don't know, Thailand, and let's roll the yeah. dice. Uh, even a Malaysia, for for that matter, who, you know, um, ran us a bit uh, in, that, yeah, lost in that game, that 4-2 game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, of course, again, the go- conversation there was more on uh, the refereeing and uh, uh, those, yeah. those things. But but instead of concentrating on the Malaysian project and how they the kind of football mm. they are playing, and and again fitting back into what you were saying, Eric, about some of these PIO guys, uh, uh, because the Malaysians also drafting in a bunch of people who are born outside. We of course saw Morocco at the World Cup and what they did. Yeah, I think they had sixteen of their twenty three players that were born, uh, you know, in Europe or or other parts of yeah. uh, outside of Morocco for sure. So so yeah, so to use the this Indian diaspora that we talk about uh, so proudly and with so much. Uh, you know, uh, passion uh, from time to time to also bring in these aspects of it, which will also, in the end, for those of us for whom the goal is just to grow the game, irrespective of what might happen with A team or B team, uh, it will also tackle some of the issues that South Asians or brown people face uh, in some of these countries, you know, as mm. as kids get more and more involved. Uh, with organized football uh, in, let's say, the United Kingdom or mainland Europe or even countries like Australia where there's a significant yeah. Indian population. Uh, so, yep. so bring these kids into the game. That's, that's, that's how we then achieve the broader goals also that we have beyond who wins World Cups and, 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 yeah. and who's the best team around. Yeah, I think we uh, we both touched upon the players and the squad and stuff. And uh, we're not talking about the performance on the pitch. We've already continued that conversation. Uh, Eric told me he's on a time, so I'm gonna rush. You know, just gonna rush into the final part of the conversation, which is about mm. let's talk about performance on the pitch now. And from the time the match has come in, uh, it's not been a very bad uh, run to say. Yes, we can keep all the other things aside. Who are we playing and all of those, uh, you know, stuff around that. Uh, because we'll be here all day talking about that. But the last year, the run that they had, 
on pitch performance was good there was it wasn't that indian team was not completely tested at all whether it's the side against lebanon mm. uh, the kuwait team or whoever that they played in the saf as well uh, yep. you know the whole point also was can this indian team come back in the second half after being a goal down and we saw that they did mm. actually play uh, the penalties and you know till the end they were the team was right up there uh, yep. now yes the different ball game at this point asian cups a different gravy altogether but there are some positives that we are taking into this tournament as well right uh, in terms of the performance and certain players stepping up their goal now yes injuries have been really crucial just when we thought we were seeing some beautiful football and a camaraderie between you know, jingan and anwar and all of those and jixin playing really well uh, we don't have anwar yeah. we don't have jixin but uh, at the same time we see these few players who have done some decent jobs uh in the mm-hmm. ISL and hence they are on the plane and they are in Qatar right now so start starting mm-hmm. with you um how do you see yes it's a big onus again on experienced players like a jingle and pritam kotal at the back and then at the front for chethi to lead or even with when i say lead he just doesn't have to be play his presence literally matters because that's <clears> what <throat> he carries in this current team so how do you see all of that going about uh and what do you see you know get what can we expect on the pitch uh because we see this team talking about great mentality we see them come back from behind uh, and this is a big tournament here's where we need to see much more from them so it's it's undoubted that the the, the the camaraderie the the sort of environment within the national team camp today or when i say today i mean like in in this period uh, has been fantastic everyone is in it together and and what i think what we have seen is a slight shift in how much players are willing to fight for one another uh to to because there are gaps mistakes are made you're trying all kinds of things uh like eric pointed out if we try to make the, the this attempt to play out along the ground from from the back the, against australia that that that's the end of uh, the story uh, right there but but so but when we do make mistakes we've seen uh, you know others try to compensate cover up make sure that there's some uh, ability to recover from those mistakes um coming back from a goal down and things like that and 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 the, the fighting spirit i think there are plenty of players guys like sandesh who have uh, demonstrated that uh, that fire for a while uh, some of these players also pick themselves in in the team so 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 that's an easy one i don't think motivation uh, or or you know the, the the team spirit will be will be an issue in this competition at all what what it will come down to is how well we do and and again uh, this Uh, sort of links back to eric's point on on wanting to see some some kind of games whether it's friendly or otherwise uh because strikers need to take those one two chances that they might get uh in mm. these games otherwise you're really not posing we're not likely to have five or six shots on goal against either yeah. australia or uzbekistan you if you lucky you get one or two clear cut chances if you work things really well you do that quick counter and some suddenly a yeah. thapa or someone find uh, apuya i don't know somebody finds themselves at the edge of the box with with an opportunity to hit the target and then if you mm-hmm. sky it you know outside that that will be for me an extremely disappointing end or 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 result uh, out of this uh, this entire process uh, the other thing is that now that the squad is as small and tight as it is everyone knows uh, essentially what these boys are capable of what they're going to be doing uh, no disrespect to the ISL but there is very little connect between uh, the league and what happens there and what happens at international football it's a whole other uh, sort of scenario so so bringing uh, what players may or may not have done at, at the league level into a conversation about the asian cup i think is a bit premature maybe 10 years from now the league will be at at that stage but mm. but as of now uh, we're, we're not there and i i don't know eric probably will uh, not yeah. disagree with that uh, either yeah it's a great point and that was what happened you know uh, four years eight years ago in the cycle was that uh it was actually Ange Postecoglou who's coaching Tottenham now took yeah. a lot of the young players and bred them in to the world cup and yeah we struggled at the world cup you know we lost in the group stages we lost every game played against spain but he blooded a lot of youngsters in that time and when you get shown on the world stage they got moves all around europe and most of those players have maybe stopped playing by now but the pattern remained 
And a lot of players are getting selected from the A-League at a certain point in time, which is what the ISL, all the players are from the ISL. Now, out of this squad, only four players have come from the A-League. Two, two goalkeepers, it's going to be number two, number three goalkeeper. A 36-year-old naturalised Uruguayan who's scoring goals for fun. And he chose him over the best Australian striker who's playing at Melbourne City, who's on the same amount of goals as him, scored a hat-trick against Bangladesh in the last World Cup window, didn't pick him. And the other one is a left-back, Aziz Bayic, who's been playing, he's played 50 or 60 caps for Australia. Very solid, need him in the squad. So now we've got away from this uh, this idea of picking just the A-League because we've got 30, 30 games plus the Cup. Yeah. And exactly what you're saying, to try and get that, that growth in the Indian Super League, huge disconnect because... Um, you know, one is always stopping for the international breaks and two, getting more fixtures and understanding the, 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 the climate in which the national team coach wants. And he talks about time. He's, all the players are basically playing at Mohan Bagan anyway. So <laughs> they're all playing in the 11 there. And if you want to, they may as well sign the whole team. Um, but I think where, where, where India is concerned, um, they, at least, you know, like technically and tactically, they, 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 they have only got one job, and that's to be in camp, taking all the information around them. Sunil Chetri won't let these boys take a backward step. They'll have that mentality, and the arrogance is what you're saying. You want to see arrogance and fighting for each other. Referee, get onto him. Someone tackles someone, get in. You want to have um, that camaraderie. And if and you guys know, India you know, five, ten years ago, it was kind of like against a bigger team, just, you know, shy away. Now they're in the people's faces. Even Sinul Chetri is not, um, you know, aggressive. He's fighting everything. And that's what you need. You need to get under the skin of, um, you know, higher up opponents. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Completely agree. And, and uh, on the Sunil point, uh, Siju, I think at the Asian Cup in 2011, uh, which was also back in Qatar at that time, they were shaping up. They were getting their stadiums in, in shape for, for the World Cup 10 years or so later. Uh, we went to that tournament after a gap of almost three decades. So it was a huge moment for, for the men's national team. Bai Chung was around the same age then, I think maybe a little bit younger than Sunil is now. And of course, the fitness levels are massively different. Uh, bai Chung was already pretty much not playing but in the last game against Bahrain, uh, which I think ended 5-2, I'm, I'm not sure, but just uh, from memory, uh, when Bai Chung did come on for the last 10 or 15 minutes, uh, suddenly this team that was otherwise, you know, kind of a had accepted its fate in a, in a very uh, kind of good Hindu kind of uh, way, <laughs> uh, suddenly was energized, electrified and, and were like up in Bahrain's uh, business, you know, and... I, I saw, and the stadium woke up because, again, it was Qatar. So, there are a massive number of Indians uh, in the ground. And suddenly, you, you were kind of like, this is what uh, it's all about. And and so, and so and this, and this Sunil will play, not just Sunil, but at both ends. Uh, Sunil at one end and Gurpreet at the other. You can't forget that Gurpreet has now been in the national team for like four Asian Cup cycles from the time he was a 16-year-old. So, 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 he needs to really... Uh, show up at this tournament and and in fact if nothing else like, like Eric was saying that how, how the World Cup has been a platform for a lot of uh, Aussie boys uh, not just boys but boys and girls to go out into Europe and, and play football uh, there professionally I think this might be at this stage of Gurpreet's career if he has uh, let's say the kind of showing that uh, that Subrata Paul had in 2011 Right uh, against similar sides, against the South Koreas, against the Australias, uh, making those eight, nine, ten saves uh, in a game, it puts you in the shop window. And as someone who's already played uh, Europa League football, who knows? Maybe there's a chance for uh, again some scouts to think about. Okay, these Indian goalkeepers. But I also think I also think that, like Eric was saying, uh, for us as well, uh, goalkeepers are probably the best positioned to make that break out, to, to go uh, outside of the ISL and play competitive football on a regular basis may not be in a top league in, in Europe at this point, but, but there's plenty else happening in the world. Look at what's happening in the MLS, the A-League and so, so many other things. So, so, uh, so these are some of the things I'm looking forward to and, and, and hopefully some of these senior boys can, can inject a bit of that uh, extra fire 
Uh, because really, uh, there's nothing at stake uh, except, you know, uh, how high or not we'll hold our heads up when we get on that flight back home. Yeah. And finally, I would want to ask both of you all, your expectations for the results. What do you think? Siddhant, so you can go first from the three matches. I, I'm, I'm trying to practice uh, detachment from the outcome. So, I, 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 would, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I, I don't know about results, but, but, but I think in, in terms of uh, goals, uh, two draws and a win would be... <laughs> Eric, are you well, still sticking with what yeah. you said on the photo telegrams? Yeah, listen, my my astrologer just just texted me and he said <laughs> that um, we're going to win against Australia. No, no. no I, I, honestly speaking, I, I I would love to I would love to see India okay. beat Australia for for a whole host of reasons. Um, you know, it, it's not that far fetched to think that a lot of teams in their you know in the first game of tournaments has been many many upsets to go through and. Um, you know, I, I hope India do get a result against Australia, but I'd love to see Australia go through to the next round. Um, look, India, Uzbekistan, that's going to be a tough game. Syria, that's the game where whatever they do, if they've practiced parking the bus for, you know, the last bit of camp, they've almost got to just try and maybe open up and play the way that they've been playing for the last 12 months, which is open, expansive, exciting, Changte, Mahesh, they have got the ability to play passes through for, yeah. for Sunil. Um, there's a lot to be excited about. It's just that confidence to go and know, you know what, we can we can go on the top stage here and, and perform. Great. I think uh, we've spoken enough and everyone's spoken <laughs> and everyone said their bits. There have been some fancy quotes out there, like a giant is definitely out of its slumber now. The sleeping giant is no more sleeping. We'll all mm. see. Come 13th of January, when we kick off against uh, Australia and then we play on the 18th of Uzbekistan and 23rd against Syria. It is the AFC Asian Cup, a big one on the cards. It's going to happen in Qatar. Eric and Sudan, thank you so much for doing this. And uh, it was a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed. And thank you once again for taking time out and coming on the show. Pleasure. To everyone listening, this was a Totally Indian Football Show and episode number 98 had to be special. I was graced by a journalist and a former footballer a f- turned a football pundit. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, maybe we'll have Arjun Pundit one day. But uh, that's about it for now. This is me signing off. Uh, we are available on all the audio platforms. Hopefully, I'm not promising you, but uh, we'll try and put this on YouTube as well. Uh, this is the audio one so everyone can enjoy. Thank you so much once again. This is me signing off. Bye.